Hola amigos, Daniela here from Through the Looking Glass. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. In this channel, I talk about life with chronic illness. So all things chronic illness. Today, I want to talk about how to get stuff done. It is so hard to get stuff done when you're chronically ill. Your energy levels are low, your pain levels are high. It is just plain hard to get stuff done. Yet, we need to get stuff done. Life carries on. We have a house to run. A lot of us have children. So today I want to give you some tips on how to get stuff done in spite of your chronic illness. The first advice I have is to get things done in stages. You don't need to get it done all at once. One example is like doing the dishes. If you have a sink full of dishes and it's feeling overwhelming and you don't feel you can get through, so you basically just ignore it, just take baby steps. Just say, I am going to get this done in three stages. So just get in there, get that first one third of the dishes done and leave it, walk away. Go rest, go do whatever else you are planning to do and later you come back and you do another one third and by the third time you come back it will be done sure it will take you all day to get it done but if you hadn't started and if you haven't done one third here one third there and one third there it would still be that big pile of dishes so just don't be afraid to break things down into steps and stages and have them done separately setting a timer can be very helpful with that you just set up five minutes on your phone and then you start the activity and you only do it for five or ten minutes whatever time you set up for and for me that gives me motivation to start something because a lot of the times you know, using the dishes um, example again, if I see that, oh wow, there's just it's gonna be so much work, there's just no way I can get through this, I won't even get started. I won't even start it. But if I say, I'm only gonna do it for five minutes, I'm going to set up that timer, and once the timer rings, I can just leave it, and then I'm already there, I can see the result, it's almost done. A lot of the times I just finish it. So it's kind of like a motivation thing. I give myself permission to stop after five minutes. So that motivates me to start. But once I'm there and I'm seeing the result and I'm almost done, a lot of the times I just finish. But also there may be times where my back is hurting so much that I'm like just watching that timer and I'm like, okay, one more minute, one more minute of this. And I really do need to stop after the timer goes off. Next, we're going to alternate activities. So when you are doing something, you're primarily using a certain muscle group and it's putting strain in certain areas of your body, especially repetitive movements. So after you do that for a certain amount of time, you're going to start to feel a lot of tension and pain building up. So if you, again, using the timer, if you only do something for about five to 10 minutes and then you change the activity, so it doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop doing things. I mean, if you need to rest and you need to rest, but sometimes it's just a matter of that particular part of your body that's being strained, then change the activity and go do something else, especially alternating um, things that are more sitting down, maybe like answering emails. For me, I do a lot of like video editing and then I alternate that with things that require a little bit more physical. I'll do some activities that I'm standing up and then if I start getting too dizzy, then I will break that and do some activities where I can do it sitting down. So basically alternating activities so that you're not overstraining a particular part of your body or a muscle. Next is find something small to do that you know that you can actually finish because that will give you a sense of accomplishment. So if you're just breaking all the different tasks in small stages, and you may not necessarily get them all done by the end of the day, that can leave a little bit of a sense of not achieving anything. But like I said, they will eventually get done as if you had ignored them 
and thought that they were too overwhelming to get started with in the first place, they would not be done anyways. But like I said, if you have a bunch of unfinished things, it may add to that sense of like an accomplishment. So also make sure to have some small tasks during the day that you know you're able to finish so that you have something to show for yourself, so that you have that sense of accomplishment, I've actually did this which leads to the next one, acknowledge what you achieved, even if it's half something, okay? So if you started organizing, uh, you know, your closet and you only got half done, acknowledge that you got all the section done. Let's say all you managed to do that day was to make your bed. Don't look at it, all I did was make my bed. Look at, wow, I actually made my bed today. Look how beautiful it looks. So we need to celebrate the small things. Every little achievement for us is a big deal. Any task for a normal abled person that they would just brush it off as a daily task, for us, it can be a huge achievement to do that. Even taking a shower and washing your hair. If you haven't seen my fibromyalgia vlog, it's about me going through a fibromyalgia flare and I use a lot of those tips to get through that week. It was a very raw and real and vulnerable vlog taking you through what it's like to be in a fibromyalgia flare. I will leave a link at the end of this uh, video so that you can check that one out. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really supports my channel and we'll make sure that you won't miss any future videos. So one thing that we need to talk about when we talk productivity, getting things done, is lists. Lists are a part of our lives. It does help us organize information. It does help us not forget things. However, when you have a chronic illness and you make lists and nothing gets checked off your list, it can be very frustrating. So what I would like to suggest in relation to lists, I'm not saying scratch them all together because they do have their purpose. They can be helpful. But instead of having like a to-do list for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, it is more of a continuous running list. So maybe set up yourself like a bigger time frame, a week or 10 days and just keep working through them. Don't set yourself hard limits and hard deadlines for them. Some days you may cross a bunch of stuff of that list and other days you may not cross any of it. And that's okay because you didn't have to achieve those by that day. You can take a few days off and then when you have a better day, you may just do a bunch of them together. So just let this be a fluid list. Just let it be a reminder of what needs to be done without the pressure of when they need to be done. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. There are things that need to be done by a certain date. If you have to pay a bill by a certain date or you're going to pay interest, then mark it in a big red thing and that will be your top priority. You will be the first thing that we'll do when you have energy. Or, which leads me to the next advice, is delegate. Learn to ask for help. There's no shame in asking for help. The biggest leaders in the world, they don't do it all themselves. They're good managers. They know how to allocate and delegate tasks. So if there are things that have like hard deadlines that you don't think you can do it yourself, find someone who can. Build your support system, build your tribe, and you will succeed. The other thing that I want to talk about as well is don't set yourself up for failure, okay? Don't take on tasks that are too overwhelming for the time in your life. I have times where my health is better and then I have times where it's very poor. It's very fluid. That's what it is about chronic illnesses. It gets worse, it gets better, and we don't really know a lot of the times what made it worse and what made it better. We're just riding the waves and so should your expectations. So don't make plans for big projects in a time where you're going through a flare because that's just going to be disastrous. So just adapt, put it in the back burner, leave it there and just 
it will be there waiting for you when you're going through better times. And last but not least, we just need to accept that we have limitations. There is just no way around that. There are just certain things that we can't do, at least in this stage of our lives. Like I said, our illnesses are very fluid. Life is fluid. It's constantly changing. Because you can't do something now, it doesn't mean that you can't do it at a later stage in your life. Also, there are seasons for everything. We just tend to want it all, to have it all done, all at the same time. At the end of the day, we may just need to accept that there may be things that we can't do it right now at this moment. We may need to adapt those things. So sometimes you can still do them, but do them a little differently. And then sometimes you have to find something else altogether. What was it about what you wanted to do that you wanted to do so badly? Was it the experience itself? Is it how it made you feel? Was it the result? And then try to apply those other things that we talked about. Maybe you may just need to find something else altogether, but that will give you that same feeling that you were looking for 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 that activity that you at the moment can't do. So I hope this was helpful at all for you guys. I'm going to leave here the link for that vlog that I mentioned earlier in the video as well as my fibromyalgia story. And uh, ciao for now. I see you next time. Mm -hmm.